Hi, this is Squad, and in this video, I'm going to tell you about general pharmacology mechanisms. So, pharmacology is trying to do, in general, just this thing. You have a protein, and uh, this protein does some kind of work. You want to either make it happen or stop it. So here, you have a thing that binds to this pocket. This protein is evolved to bind to this thing, which its job is to control this amount of work. And we call this thing that normally binds to it and do the work, agonist. And pharmacology try to mimic this agonist and uh, force this protein to do the work. There's another type of binding to the same pocket, and these are the competitive inhibitors. Competitive inhibitors can bind to the same pocket, but there is going to be no work. This is because competitive inhibitor is not exactly like agonist. Binding happens, but the protein is not going to do the work. The job of competitive inhibitor in pharmacology is to occupy this area and uh, make it harder for agonists to bind. This results in less work. So let's draw a quick uh, intuition diagram. So this is the concentration of the agonist and uh, y-axis is the effect. Usually, as you increase the concentration, the effect goes up and plateaus. This is the natural maximum. Now, if you add, uh, this is by the way agonist alone, but if you add agonist plus competitor inhibitor together, then you need to add much more agonist to get to the same amount of effect. So there is going to be a shift. And this is because you need to have more agonist to uh, win against the competitor. So again, the second curve is agonist plus competitive inhibitor administered together. Now let's talk about the second pocket, and this is the allosteric pocket. Allosteric pocket means something will bind to it and the protein is going to change. The change of the protein will result in the change of the amount of work. But allosteric regulation cannot directly uh, cause work. It's usually the modification of the work that is driven by agonist. So allosteric inhibition and activation change how agonist binding do the work. So they are helpers. Now you have one category called uh, allosteric inhibitors and uh, another category called allosteric activators. Basically the opposites of each other. If you administer allosteric inhibitor and agonist together, what happens is that here, the effect goes up, but it plateaus. So this is the agonist plus allosteric inhibitor. Allosteric regulation basically crippled the protein's ability to do its maximum work. Now, the opposite, allosteric activator, can activate this protein to do more than its normal maximum, increasing the effect from agonist alone. So if you administer agonist plus allosteric activator, you get this boost in this protein's max work potential. Okay, all of these things that bind to a protein and start the work or stop the work or change how much work is done, all these binders are called ligands. In core, pharmacology is about designing ligands and designing how to use ligands together to achieve ideal amount of work. Now let me tell you about uh, current pharmacology landscape on real cell. So here you have a membrane, here is a ligand. 33% of all the pharmaceutical compounds, ligands, go through GPCR receptor family to uh, affect the cell. So in GPCR family, you have a receptor, this is the GPCR, and you have a protein called G protein, and you have another protein called effector. When a ligand binds to the G protein coupled receptor, G protein gets activated, and activated the G protein can now go and activate effector. The effector is going to do the final work. So it's not just one protein binds to something and do the work directly, but there's a little bit of cascade from G protein, coupled receptor, G protein, and effector to uh, lead to the final work. And the next category of uh, pharmaceutical target that's pretty popular is channel receptors. And about 18% of uh, all compounds use channel 
receptor as their targets. So ligand can bind to this channel and the channel's normal job is to let some things in and some things out because membranes are not permeable to everything. And the ligand's binding can force this channel to either open or close, leading to stuff going through it. And the next category, about 16% of uh, pharmaceuticals today target is cytosolic receptor proteins. These are stuff that's inside of the cell. And a ligand can go through the membrane and bind to this thing and activate it. And this thing will usually directly do the job. And the next category is uh, receptor tyrosine kinase. So here is a RTK receptor. A ligand can bind to an RTK receptor and binding of the ligand activates this receptor. And another receptor can also be activated nearby. And when this happens, these two receptors uh, dimerize to become one. And the tail that results from this dimerization becomes the uh, enzymatic site and uh, can do a lot of work. That's why this receptor has this name kinase attached to it because it will do the kinase work which is plus phosphate group to other proteins. RTKs account for about 3% of all the pharmaceuticals. And similar to RTK you have cytokine receptor family and again here's a receptor and a pharmaceutical ligand can bind to it. Usually these ligands are much bigger. And because of this binding, here you have this ligand receptor uh, surface. Another receptor can come and bind to this surface. It results in dimerization. RTK tail can do the work directly, but for cytokine receptor family, another protein will come, uh, maybe multiple proteins, and bind to the cytosolic tail and help do the work. RTKs, you usually need a two ligand bind two receptors for dimerization to happen and then the tail will do the job directly. But for cytokine receptors, bigger ligand binds to the receptor, another receptor comes, binds to this combo and you need a little bit of help on the cytosolic side to do the work. I don't know how much accounts for the cytokine receptor, but if you add all these different percentages that I drew here, it's about 70%. And the rest of the 30% use many, many different wild ways. I'm not going to talk about them here. So in general, pharmacology is about ligands to design work. And depending on the target, different ways of activation exist.